Hi friend, do you ever get caught up in making your card projects more complicated than they really need to be? <sighs> Welcome to the club, me too. Card making can be simple. It can be so simple. Beautiful cards can be very, very simple, but sometimes we just get involved in all the complicated, the techniques and all the things. Today, we are going to make some super simple cards. I'm calling them one minute cards. Now, I'm not actually timing myself, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make these cards in one minute or less. So I hope you'll stick around and watch how quick and easy some of these lovely card projects can be. At the end, we'll talk about life. Uh, we had one of the scariest days of my life happen not too long ago. Uh, something super scary in my family, including what we believe to be a miracle on the same day. Uh, I'll share about that at the end, so I hope you'll stick around. So here is what we are going to do. I'm going to show you two stamp sets. We're gonna create two super quick cards with each one. Then we're gonna walk through and do some with some other stamp sets. I wanna give you a lot of ideas in a short amount of time here to get you thinking about how you can make some really nice cards and do it very simply, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We are first going to use that Quiet Reflection stamp set. I have chosen crumb cake cardstock in very vanilla and several colors of ink that coordinate with them. And when your first stamp doesn't stamp properly, you can start over, right? So we're gonna do this again. I need to get this a little bit harder pressed than I did on my first one. That looks much better. So I wanna stamp this lovely tree stamp three times. Now I am going to bring in, I, one of the best things about this Quiet Reflection stamp set is the greetings. I am going to use the basic ones on the front, but then there's some really nice ones for the inside, like the friendship of a pet is one of life's greatest gifts and praying for his comfort to soften the sadness and bring you peace. There's some really beautiful stamps in this one, but we're just gonna use the ones that are more fitting for the front. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the stamping. You'll get to watch along with that. And then once we're done with all this stamping, I'll take a little break. I will finish these cards. I'll put them on some card bases, maybe add some gems, maybe add some twine, a little bow or something. I'll turn them into finished cards and come back and show them to you. We'll save a bit of time that way so you don't have to see me finishing all the cards, but you can trust me that we are making super quick, simple cards today, okay? So you can see what I'm doing here. I just stamped that nice tree stamp two times, added the greeting. Let's move on to that other stamp set. It is called Magnolia Mood. So again, I'm gonna bring in some crumb cake cardstock. I am going to stamp this nice stamp several times. Here I am bringing in my Mossy Meadow ink again. We'll stamp this several times across the bottom. Both of these stamp sets are the distinctive where they have that really neat fading effect. Now for some of these, I am not going to stamp the greeting right on the card itself. I am going to stamp it on a separate piece. So for this one, I am going to stamp the happy birthday stamp onto one of my scrap strips of paper that I save from cutting my card mats. And we are going to use that to finish that card. Now let's do another one with this Magnolia Mood. Now on this one, I am using my Pebbled Path ink. I love, love, love this color of ink. It's kind of a cross between a brown and a gray. And I'm going to stamp off once first onto my scrap paper because I wanna get a really faded effect here. Now, the reason for that is I wanna be able to stamp this greeting over the top as part of that, and I wanna make sure it still shows up, okay? So we can still see that that says, thank you for being you. Now, when I finish these cards, I will trim some of these mats down, but I'm starting with them measuring four by five and a quarter 
just so that you know. Some of them will stay full size, some of them will not. Now, here is my, this will be my card base for the one that I just stamped. And I do want to do some stamping across the base of this. I think we'll just do one at each corner with this beautiful magnolia stamp, okay? So we've got that stamping done. Let's move on to our next set. For these next few cards, these are the stamp sets we are going to be adding in. And since this one doesn't have any greetings, I am going to be adding in this one, which I absolutely love, these long, narrow greetings. It's got a really unique one in there for save the date, I will point out. So let's start with that textured timber stamp set. And I am going to bring in these two stamps. Then we're also going to stamp the greeting on one of the long narrow strips. So I am going to use copper clay first. This is my ink color. I think these wood grain stamps are just fantastic. Such a neat look. I know sometimes it's harder to find things that are appropriate for cards for men. Well, these right here are perfect. So I'll stamp those. And then this large cross cut, like of the stump, I think is really neat. I'm gonna stamp that over top. And you know what? I think now that I see that there, I'm gonna stamp this a few times. We'll stamp one down here as well. Okay, so that will be for the card mat. And then I want to bring in a piece of vanilla. I'm going to stamp my greeting for this one. And so here you can see how large these long narrow greetings are. And this is just a really great set for some unique stamps. When you have larger stamps like this that can take up some take up make up some of the interest of your card you really don't have to do as much for the rest of your card so okay we have that one now let's bring in a piece of vanilla we will stamp another one here i'm going to bring in that pebbled path color again and on this one we will use the other greeting that I had prepared, the happy anniversary. So let's stamp that first and we'll flip this around. I'm gonna change my design a little bit here. So we'll stamp that. Now I wanna stamp some of these that look like birch. And we'll stamp a few of them up here. I'm gonna offset them some stamp some down here below as well and some over here okay now let's move on to this other stamp set this other one everyday details with the bird's nest the vase and the teacup i think these are really neat ones let's start with the vanilla and I want, on the background, I want to use some boho blue for this one. We're going to do the bird's nest on this first one. But for the background, I just want something to provide a little bit of interest on the background, but not really. We're going to put a piece on top that has that bird's nest on it. So we won't see a lot of this, but... I do want something to have some interest, not just a plain background. So you can always do this with any stamp that you have is cover that background and just use it as kind of something subtle behind your main interest. Let's put the bird's nest here. And I prepared two of the greetings from this set. Let's use the one that says, wishing you so much joy on this special day. And we'll stamp it right there. Now let's stamp our second card with this set. And we are going to use a different color of ink this time. Let's use some Blackberry Bliss. And let's use some 
the, the teacup. Let's use the teacup. So this time we're going to stamp this three times straight across the center. And let's stamp our greeting onto a strip. It says you make every day a little brighter. Okay. The next two stamp sets we are going to use are right here, Wild Ferns and Pets and More. This is a set you can flip, oh, flip the stamp over and stamp the fill-in stamp with that same stamp, uh, just so that you know. So let's go ahead and start. We will start with Pets and More. Super cute set with the cat, the dog, the rabbit, the, I believe it's a fox and an owl. So I'm gonna see up this right here first. I want that dog in the center. And then I am going to stamp again, just to repeat this pattern. Now I'll clean off my stamp real quick. And I'm going to flip these over now. I am laying the flat surface down this time. Flat surface down. The side you would normally stamp with is face up. So this kind of stamp set, it's called reversibles. Now you can see when I've inked this, it has ink on the whole thing. I am using that same color of ink, but I'm stamping off one time on my scrap paper to get that lighter color so that we can see the detail still. But we are also filling it in and we don't need two colors of ink that way, okay? So here is my first one. I'm pulling this stamp in from the Wild Ferns stamp set. The Pets and More set doesn't have any greetings in it, but I know sometimes we lose our furry friends and I really like that heartfelt condolences stamp with this because I think that's probably what I would use this set for the most. Now I am going to stamp again. We'll put these on some different blocks so that I can stamp them individually. And I'm going to create a background with them. I'm gonna use another color. All of these colors I pulled out, I thought they would all coordinate with each other. And let's use wild wheat for the dog. We'll use boho blue for the cat. We'll go ahead and start stamping these kind of all over the place we can create our repeat pattern here. We need another blue cat down here. So here you can see again, I'm just creating that background repeat pattern. On this one, I'm doing it on the card mat. I will attach this to a card base, uh, but you can, you can do this on the card base itself. You can do this on the mat. If you're mixing up your colors like I am and your stamps, Make sure you keep them separate. Don't put them on the wrong ink pad. So we use this and then let's stamp on a strip of paper here. And I'm not sure I have, let's see what I have. You are greatly appreciated, sure. Uh, I was looking for one specifically for the pets, but we'll just use this. This could be for anybody who likes cats and dogs. So we'll turn this into a card and get back in a minute to show you. Now let's use that beautiful Wild Ferns stamp set. And for this one, I am going to use my Mossy Meadow. In sets like this, you can create so many neat things with because you can just start stamping and just build and build until you have something amazing. So I am going to create kind of a decorative corner look on this. This is something I do fairly often. I'm sure you've seen this in other videos if you've seen my other videos. So I'm just gonna keep stamping these ferns to fill this in. Now if I wanted to, I could stamp some different colors, get some color variation, have some lighter and some darker. I am just sticking to a few basic colors here. So I am going to stick with that. 
And my greeting says, here's to new beginnings. Now let's stamp another one. Let's do one on vanilla. And for this one, I am going to stamp this larger stamp in the center. I will also stamp it once on each side off, off the edge a little bit. I'm going to use this smaller fern stamp in between. And I may stamp the greeting separately. I want to cut a little bit bigger piece of paper than what I have here. This will be our last stamp set. We'll make two cards with it before I show you the finished products of all of what we have created here. I wanted to make sure I worked this stamp set in. I absolutely love this one. And when you're making simple cards, it really helps if your stamp set has a combination of those the nice images like flowers or leaves or trees or whatever they are along with some of those nice greetings and this is one that really has a nice assortment of uh, of the greetings and the images so we'll stamp that we'll add in our greeting right here and we'll do one more on the crumb cake cardstock I love that this stamp set, and it actually has a coordinating set. Uh, I'll show it to you. I decided not to use this one for this, these cards, but they have the, they look like a field journal or like field notes. And so you'll notice little words on some of these that, like this says figure A, and then it has, I believe the botanical name of this plant on it. Okay, now we'll stand, stamp this one. Just a little bit of love your way. Sending, what am I saying? Just sending a bit of love your way. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick break. I will be right back. I wanna show you these cards completed. Let's take a look at these finished cards. Now, a lot of these, I left them just as they were and just put them on a coordinating card base. I did do some trimming on a few. I added gems to a few of them, but uh, these you can see, I just put them on a coordinating card base. And those are very nice cards, especially if you're just starting out or um, you just like to keep things really simple. These are beautiful, even though they were extremely simple to create. Let's look next at the ones made with the Magnolia Mood stamp set. So for this one, uh, I decided to leave all that plain space on there. You'll notice on some of the others, I trimmed off the plain space that I hadn't stamped on. But on this one, I thought that looked kind of nice. So I decided to leave it. I popped up that greeting using some foam dimensionals on top. This one, I did trim this piece down some and added a few gems down here. The gems I used all came from the same pack and I'll link to all these products in the video description below, but they all coordinated and we're all on the same pack. So here we have from the wood stamp set. I just put this on a card base, as you can see, both of them, this one I popped up the greeting, added a few of those gems. Thought those looked really nice. Let's look at these next. We have the bird nest and the teacup here. So this one I trimmed down as you can see, so you can see some of that nice background. I really like how that turned out. This one, I left some of the plain space on this piece and covered some of it up with that greeting. Here we have the pet cards. I think these are some of my favorites. I thought these turned out really cute, even though they're really simple. This one, I took some of that plain space and just trimmed little pieces off and attached them separate. That added a little bit more interest to it. The ferns. Here you can see what I did. Very simple. I just added a few gems to this one. This one I trimmed down a little bit and then stamped this on a separate piece since I didn't have any big enough laying here and added that. And then last but not least, the lovely and sweet stamp set. I left these 
very simple as well as you can see just added a few of those gems so i hope you enjoyed seeing these simple cards just remember when you think like oh i need to add more and more and more sometimes it's not sometimes we just need to do a little bit less so if you want to stick around let's talk a little bit about something that happened in our family recently so this really scary event that happened recently uh, probably about a month ago, I had shared that my husband had been in this really serious trucking accident and like walked away completely unharmed. And we were so thankful for that. And then 19 days later, my husband fell from a lift that was probably 20 or 25 feet in the air. So, uh, so, so this day we'll we'll reflect on what happened this day uh and how it all turned out but definitely it, it ties for the scariest day of my life i think i was in a car accident when i was in high school and i was flown to the hospital in a helicopter and came home that night completely uninjured besides a cut on my forehead if you ever see my scar uh anyway but because they were flying me to the hospital i thought i was going to die so anyway, this particular day ties, I would say, for the scariest day of my life when I thought my husband might not make it through the day. So, so here's what happens. My husband is trimming trees on a, a farm across the road from us. And our son was helping him operate the lift. So he's like moving the, we'll call it the bucket. I don't know if that's the right term. Up and down, moving him where he needs to be. And I had seen them down there out the window. Uh, and, and the next thing I knew, I was relaxing. I was taking a bath. It was wonderful. It was a Saturday. And I get a phone call from our son. And I answer and I hear this. Dad fell from a lift. The ambulance is on the way. And in the background, uh, I hear my husband yelling in agony. So I jump out, I start drying off and getting dressed. And I, I was like, okay, people need to be praying for him. Like, And I sent out a message to the 11 people I could think of at the time, his family, my family, and a few others. And it was like, I say, Matt fell from lift. Pray for him now is pretty much what I say. So I, our daughters were here. Uh, one of them heard what was going on and was immediately bawling. And I'm trying to think through, I was trying to stay calm. I'm thinking through all the things before I go over there. I walked, I just walked over. It's real close here. Uh, but I'm like, okay, if I can, I don't know if I can ride in the ambulance with him, but I need to take my purse. I need a coat. Uh, so I like, you know, I get myself together. I go over there. On my way over there, I receive a call from his mom. And I'm like, i sorry, I don't know anything. I wish I could tell you he was okay. I have no idea what's going on. So... I get off the phone because one of the paramedics was coming towards me as I was walking over there and she wanted to know. I lost my microphone. She wanted to know if I was family. So I said yes. And the first thing she says to me is they're calling the helicopter. And I think I freaked out probably. So like nobody wants to hear that they're calling a helicopter. I, lived through that in high school i i so i think i got upset and then she proceeded to explain to me that they think he's going to be okay but uh anytime you've broken large bones apparently that is what they do uh and they and because he'd fall in a really long way and who knows what's wrong with your insides when you fall in that well, you know, that far that, that they, they can't really tell right now. So where do I go from here? The helicopter came, the helicopter took him. Uh, they 
I came back home to take care of children and things and pack up stuff. I had no idea how long I might be going to the hospital for. But I was here for a little bit trying to get all that under control before I went to the hospital. They called me. He had already been there, of course. They got him there fast and had already looked over him and thought it was just his arm. So it took me a while, but I got to the hospital. It's an hour drive and I'd done all my things here before I left. And so I get there and they told me which emergency room he was in. So I go into the emergency room and they're bandaging him up. He was in an incredible amount of pain uh, before they took him and also still while he's sitting in this bed and they're bandaging up his arm. And So the person working on him is part of the surgery department, I believe, uh, works with the surgeon who ended up doing surgery on him. So he's bandaging him up and tells me that he broke his humorous. So we've had some lots of humorous jokes about this. It's pretty humorous that he broke his arm, right? So tells me he broke his humorous. And as soon as like he's talking and, and I wanted to interrupt him so badly, but I, I behaved myself and I waited until he was done talking. <laughs> and I say, is that all this wrong with him? Like how, how is that even possible that he fell that far? And that is all that is wrong with him. I don't understand. So the answer was yes, that is all that they had found that was wrong with him. So they were impressed, amazed that that was all that was wrong with him. So then I had to pull out my phone and be like, do you wanna see where he fell from? So then I'm showing everybody the picture of what he fell from. And then they're even more amazed that all he did was broke his arm. So uh, a little bit more about it. We, we will never know, I don't think, uh, but we actually think his arm may have been broken before he fell. He, so as he was falling, he was able to catch himself and hang from the lift for a short little bit. Thankfully, it slowed down his fall. It kept him falling straight and not landing on his head or his neck or who knows what. But he remembers thinking like, oh, I'm going to be okay now. And then for some reason, his arm let go. And he so he thinks his arm was actually already broken by the branch that had come back at him and and, and potentially hurt him before, you know, that knocked him down. And so anyway, we don't know. Uh, if that's the case, he did not have a single injury from falling 20 or 25 feet. So how is this possible? I do not know, uh, but I know I'm glad I say my prayers in the morning and at night and lots of times throughout the day. Uh, I had been joking with, with a good friend and said, can guardian angels run out because like he has used his share in the last 19 days, 19 days, not even three weeks. <laughs> and her response was good thing he has a praying wife because that way we know they won't run out. So scary. Uh, seems, seems potentially like a miracle. Uh, and actually I wanted to talk about miracles anyway. So let's just do that now. I wasn't going to, but what, but why not if you're still here and still listening? So when this accident happened, I had been listening to an audiobook about miracles. Uh, Lee Strobel is an author who has written, he does research into uh, the Christian faith, basically. He started as an atheist and his wife became a Christian and he wanted to prove her wrong. And his job was, oh, some kind of like investig, like he was trained as an investigator or something like that. So he used his investigator skills to go back and research Jesus and, and, and all the things. Uh, but anyway, he, he's written quite a few different books at this point, but one, I was listening to the one called The Case for Miracles. And wow, there are some amazing things that happen in this world. If you 
don't believe in miracles, I would encourage you to start looking for some stories. Uh, and here's the thing, this world we live in, it is not going to force light and hope down our throats. It's gonna force all these things that drag us down and make us depressed and sad and unwell. Those are the things that are gonna be fed to us on a daily basis. So if we wanna find these things, we have to do some searching in a lot of cases, but there are some amazing stories about miracles. And this book, there were some in the book. Um, I've heard some others, different places. Last night, I pulled out a magazine. It's Indiana Farmer Magazine or something. I don't know, it came, it was laying on the table. And on the front, there was a young man who'd been injured in some kind of accident. They'd started some kind of foundation to help people going through difficult times. And I flipped open to this story to read about it. And the little box, I, I still haven't read the whole story, but I read the little box that had, that told this story. So he'd been in a car accident. It was very serious. He ended up being in the hospital for a long time, but when he was at the accident scene, he, okay, so like eight months after the accident, he says to his parents that he died that day. And his mom is like, oh no, honey, you didn't die. You're still here with us. And he says, I did die that day. Well, they go back, they end up talking to the paramedics, the people who'd been on the scene and they verified, yes, he did die. And then I don't know how long it was, he took a big breath and came back to life. So what this young man says happened is that he, he died, he met Jesus. Jesus tells him, you have a choice. You can stay here with me or you can go back to earth. But if you go back to earth, you're going to have a broken body. And the boy decides, I wanna go back to earth because if I don't, my mom is going to be really upset. So he has, I think he might be paralyzed, partially paralyzed. He's got brain injury, uh, but like what an amazing story. And there's lots of these stories. We just don't hear them on the news. You know, why make up a news station full of like the miracles of the day. I wanna see that. I want to see that. Uh, but anyway, there are amazing things that happen that cannot be explained uh, any other way besides divine intervention. So I find it really, really encouraging to hear these stories to strengthen my faith. And I wanted to share some with you. Our personal one, is it a miracle or not? I don't know. It seems like it very possibly could be. Like if you fall from 20 or 25 feet, you really should have something wrong with you besides a broken arm. Like you should have broken ribs. You should have crunched up shoulders. And I don't even know, lots of things. Uh, I've thought through all of the ways you can land from a fall that high. Feet, side, legs, back, head, neck, shoulders, all the things. And they would all yield more injuries than my husband had. So we're very, very thankful that he is okay. He is recovering, trying to figure out how to get ready for planting season without his right arm. Uh, he's not supposed to lift more than one pound for six weeks. Now, is that possible? I don't know. Uh, he probably, I probably need to get him a babysitter, right? To keep, to keep him behaving the way he should. But anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. Thanks so much. I hear from so many of you who pray for me and I, I wish I could pray for all of you individually, but because I don't know all of you, I can't do that. But I say blanket prayers for those of you who watch my videos and support my business. And I appreciate all the praying you do for us. Thank you, friends. I hope you have a blessed day. I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.